All right, before we get into types, let's quickly see what fat actually is. If we zoom all the way into a fatty food, like a piece of salmon, you'd find that the stuff we call fat is actually made up of tiny structures called triglycerides. The structure? Think octopus. The head is called glycerol, and the three tails are called fatty acids. Those tails are long chains of carbon and hydrogen, like chemical spaghetti. And that's it. This little octopus-shaped unit is what builds mostly all the fat we eat, store, and burn. Fats are mainly of two types, saturated and unsaturated, plus a third artificial type, trans fat, that we'll tackle at the end. Let's start with saturated fats. They're called saturated because their fat chains are completely filled with hydrogen. No bends, just straight links. That tight, orderly structure makes them stiff and solid at room temperature. Think butter, cheese, and bacon. And a lot more like... Now, here's why they get side-eyed. They tend to raise LDL cholesterol, the bad one that can clog up arteries if it builds up over time. That's why most health guidelines recommend keeping saturated fat under 10% of your daily calories. But that's not the whole story. Some types of saturated fats actually have benefits too. Like butyrate, found in butter, is used by your gut cells as fuel. And lauric acid from coconut oil helps fight germs. So instead of treating saturated fat like a villain, it's better to keep it balanced, choose natural sources, and focus on the overall quality of your food. Unsaturated fats. Unlike saturated fats, which are straight, stiff, and solid, unsaturated fats have bends in their tails, means they can't pack tightly together. So they say liquid at room temperature. Think olive oil, avocado oil, sunflower oil, nuts, seeds, fatty fish, that whole crew. Unsaturated fats help lower LDL cholesterol, support heart health, and reduce inflammation. They're basically the A-team of fats. Now, unsaturated fats come in two main types. Monounsaturated fats, polyunsaturated fats. Let's start with monounsaturated fats, mostly known as omega-9. They're fats with just one double bond in their chain. The single bond creates a little bend, making them liquid at room temperature, but still stable enough to cook with. You'll find them in... The main fat here is called oleic acid, also known as omega-9. Now, here's the key thing. Omega-9 is a non-essential fat. Your body can actually make it on its own. But getting it from food is still a win. Studies show omega-9 helps your body use insulin better, keeps your blood vessels relaxed, lowers bad cholesterol, lowers inflammation, and supports your overall health. Plus, monounsaturated fats are heat-stable, so they don't break down as easily when cooking. So yeah, they're your safe zone. Heart and metabolism friendly and delicious. Next up, polyunsaturated fats, or PUFAs, have more than one double bond in their fatty acid chains. That's the key. Multiple bends equals high flexibility, but also high fragility. These fats stay liquid at all temperatures and break down easily when exposed to heat, light, or air. PUFAs are essential fatty acids. Your body can't make them, so you must get them from food. They're divided into two major types, omega-3 and omega-6. Let's see omega-3. Omega-3s come in three main forms. ALA, the plant one, found in flax seeds, chia seeds, and walnuts. EPA and DHA, the marine ones, from salmon, sardines, and algae. ALA has a small role of its own, but the real brain and anti-inflammatory benefits come from EPA and DHA. Your body can convert ALA into them, just not very efficiently. Why omega-3 matters? A huge part of your brain and eyes is made of DHA. It keeps them sharp and steady. EPA and DHA produce molecules that actively turn off inflammation. Omega-3s also help keep your heartbeat steady and may reduce risk of sudden cardiac issues. Now let's look at its partner, omega-6. Omega-6 matters because it fuels cell growth and repair. It also triggers inflammation when your body needs to heal, like after an injury or infection. That's helpful, not harmful. The problem starts only when there's too much omega-6 and not enough omega-3 to calm things down. Most Western diets have a 20 to 1 ratio of omega-6 to omega-3, which may promote chronic low-grade inflammation. An ideal range is closer to 4 to 1 or even 1 to 1, though it varies individually. Trans fats. There are two kinds of trans fats. Natural trans fats, found in small amounts in meat and dairy, not really harmful in small doses. Artificial trans fats, made in factories by pumping hydrogen into vegetable oils. That's why they're called hydrogenated oils. This hydrogenation process turns liquid oil into a semi-solid form. It makes foods crisp and creamy and last forever. Great for manufacturers, but a total disaster for your health. Because this process changes the oil's shape, your body can't break it down properly. 
The downsides are insane. Raises LDL, which leads to plaque buildup. Lowers HDL, making it harder to clear plaque. Triggers inflammation in siphons vessels. Increases heart disease and stroke risk. Slows metabolism. Interferes with insulin and blood sugar balance. Affects focus, memory, and overall mood. Tends to add more fat around the belly. Reduces the effect of omega-3s. Ages cells faster by increasing oxidative stress. So yeah, moral of the story, just don't eat these bad boys. Alright guys, that's it. Hit subscribe for more science stuff.